What's up guys, Eric here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about DC's Stargirl. I think that's the official title, is DC Stargirl. I don't think it's just Stargirl, I could be wrong, but every promotion I've seen has DC Stargirl at the beginning of it. And I guess that's to differentiate it between the other like Stargirl thing that's on Disney Plus, which I haven't even looked at it, but I know a lot of people are saying, oh, is this the same thing? Why is it on Disney Plus? No, they're two different things. So I think DC Stargirl is a branding choice because of like a confusion thing. So that's what I think is going on. Either way, this is a show that's gonna be coming out on the DC Universe streaming platform as well as the CW. And I think they're gonna be a day apart. DC Universe is gonna get it a day earlier and then it'll air right after that on the CW. So interesting, interesting indeed. I've talked a little bit about the series uh, in live streams and in a couple of other videos, but I haven't really focused on the show to sort of give my support because I am gonna be covering this show when it comes out. I'm hoping it's really good uh, because I, I'm looking for something new and different and refreshing to sort of take us out of this funk we're in. And I think this show could be it. So there's been a big trailer that came out about a month and a half ago, but uh, yesterday, I believe DC or CW posted like three mini trailers, and I don't know if they're going to contain new footage or if they're going to have footage from that bigger trailer. I have seen the larger trailer, like the, the two minute one or whatever it is. I think a lot of these little trailers will probably have bits and pieces from that in it, but I'm hoping to see also some new footage. But even if I don't, I'm going to kind of jump through these briefly as we go through. And then I want to talk about an article about a possible crossover between Stargirl and The Flash, and there's a whole article about it. We're going to breeze through that. I'm going to try and do as much as I can. Enough talking. Uh, let's go ahead and check out this first trailer. Trailer. This one is called um, uh, The Plan or Plan. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a watch. New generation of justice. I have high hopes for the show. I'm a superhero. We need to make a plan. The costumes look really good. Find them. Surprise also, she can ride on the staff. That's pretty interesting. So Brainwave. That was kind of short. Um, so let's kind of jump through here. Uh, again, I have high hopes for the show. Uh, I hope it's really, really good. Uh, so we see here where she talks about being a superhero. She seems very excited. This is on trend for the CW. Uh, this is a very, this is why I'm kind of like, I'm not so surprised that the CW is sort of mirroring the show from DC Universe. This is very much a CW show in terms of the way the story is constructed. Uh, we get a little costume shot here. Uh, it looks okay. I have to see more of it. I think what I've seen in some of the still frames, it looks to be pretty good. And what I've seen from the trailers, I think it looks okay. Uh, and it's very similar. I love the detailing in the sleeve here where it's got like the, you've got like that mesh material and then it goes into like an actual star fabric. I think that's kind of neat as well. Um, you see her flipping around and doing all kinds of cool things. Uh, then riding on the staff here, like it's a surfboard in the sky, like she's the silver surfer. And uh, yeah, so we got that going on. We see a shot of the uh, Injustice League or Injustice Society. I don't know which one they're going to go with. And I have to say, they look really good. I don't know, like Sportsmaster is probably my least favorite look here. I, I'm very excited about Solomon Grundy. I can't wait to see what he looks like. I hope it's really good. If they're not going to go for hyper-realistic, I hope they go super cartoony, sort of like a Ghostbusters type thing. Not the, the rebooted Ghostbusters, like the old one where they looked kind of creepy, but they were also not very realistic. I would be okay with that. Icicle looks great. Uh, Brainwave. I, I don't know how I feel about the, that midriff in the costume. I, I don't know. Um, and uh, Tigress, uh, obviously there. So uh, all this green energy, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I don't know. So there she goes. Yeah, the suit looks really fun. I mean, I don't know how seriously we're supposed to take the show in terms of like combat and stuff. I mean, we see fighting in it, but I'm not really certain if it's gonna be more like Arrow type stuff or like Legends of Tomorrow type stuff. I'm not sure, but it still looks pretty fun. Wow, the special effects look extremely high on this. Like in terms of like the the uh, VFX and things, this is way outside of like normal like DC stuff. So, uh, all right, that was the planned trailer. Let's talk about the next one. Okay, so this is the second trailer they uploaded. It's another short one. It's called Dangerous. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a watch. Those special effects are so good. I wonder I wonder if we're going to get those special effects all the way through with the staff or if they're going to tone them down because they look really good. 
Jeez. Oh. I don't think I've seen that before. Okay, that trailer wasn't too bad. So, um, talking about the staff, there's a lot of special effects involved with the staff. And I don't know if we're going to see this every single time. I would think that we would, but I don't know. It's probably going to cost quite a bit of money to uh, do that kind of VFX every single episode. So, I don't know how often we're going to see that happening. Also, she says that the staff did something, this blowing up of this car or whatever. Uh, she said the staff did it, that she didn't do it. So is the staff sentient? I don't know. Again, I am not a huge, like, Stargirl fan from the comics. But I've heard that there's some... Let's check out... Let me, let me open up a link here and see what the powers of the staff are. Okay, so the staff is gravity manipulation, magnetic manipulation... Uh, deflection, defense force fields, energy projection, energy absorption, energy construct creation, heat emission, attunement, and dimensional travel, which was pre-crisis only. And at present, the staff is attuned to its current holder, Stargirl. So it doesn't say anything about the staff being sentient in that, but I mean, it could be. It's kind of interesting if it is, if it does have like its own personality, but that could also lead to problems in store. Well, not problems, but it could lead to ways to tell stories about the staff having a, a sentience like later on. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. That's a pretty powerful weapon though. The dimensional travel did say, um, <laughs> it did say it was a uh, pre pre crisis. So maybe if they follow the comic book, they won't, we won't see that at all. So here we go with these, uh, that's icicle looks really, really cool. I wonder if we're going to see that every single time. Just so much special effects. And this right, like this shot right here with, with the flip and everything, this looks super, super expensive to do. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. I love it, but it looks super expensive. This trailer got me more excited than the other one, actually. And then we get this cool shot of the Justice Society of America, like their round table with everybody's seat covered. And he's kind of taking her through here. And we get a shot of Star Man. And I think that's Johnny Thunder. I believe that's who that's supposed to be. I mean, it makes the most sense. Uh, Paige and I talked a little bit about it, and I believe that's who the character is. So we see that. And then we get uh, more crazy special effects. And then we get Stripe. I'm thinking that's what they're going to call it. There's an S on it. So I'm guessing they're going to go with the actual comic book name of, of this character, of his mech uh, stripe. I mean, this looks absolutely fantastic. This has got to be super expensive. I mean, this is probably, this is more detailed than anything we've seen on any of the shows. I mean, this makes the Savitar suit look really, really, really under detailed. I mean, look at that with the wires and the cables and the cords and the pistons and all the stuff in it. You don't see that kind of detail usually on TV. So it's kind of wild. So here we are, we get another look at the mask. I really like that. I think the suit's gonna look pretty good. Actually, no, I, I'm seeing right here, if you look where my cursor is, there's a gap right there on the bottom that I'm not too fond of. But that could just be because they were just doing a scene and it pulled up, but yeah, not, not a big fan of that. And then uh, she's jumping off the back of Stripe. Yeah, pretty excited about this. I think this is gonna be pretty good. Okay, we have one more trailer to look at. Let's check that one out. And here's the third and final new trailer for Stargirl. It's called Torch. Let's check it. Solomon Grundy, Starman. Oh, that's so cool. All right, so that was a short one. That was just sort of like the pass passing of the torch. Um, we get a cool shot here of Solomon Grundy. Wow, I can't wait to see what this character looks like on screen. If he's going to look good or if he's going to look bad. I believe this is Pat Dugan and Starman, where he's telling him to, you know, take the staff and uh, pass the torch thing or keep the torch burning, whatever. Uh, it's kind of cool. You see Stargirl picking up, and I guess the staff is bonding with her, uh, with Courtney there. And yeah, then you get to see her like Silver Surf off into the moonlight. So I'm pretty hyped for the show. I really am. I'm excited for this. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. The tone seems right from the trailers. There's some people that don't seem to be super excited about it, and that's fine. Uh, down in the comments below, let me know what you think of all three of these trailers or any of the trailers for Stargirl. Uh, they got you hyped for the show. Are you ready for it to come out? Do you think it's going to be good? Do you think it's going to be bad? All your thoughts and opinions down below. Let's talk about this article from Screen Rant that I found uh, in regards to like a crossover with The Flash. Talk about that for a moment. Okay, so myself, like many of you guys, had hoped that Star 
Stargirl would play a much bigger role during the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover event. We had expected to see her on that a bit more than what we got. There was nothing really teased or anything, but I had a feeling we were going to see a lot of Stargirl that she was going to be introduced and like showcase sort of like how Batwoman was done previously. We were going to see like maybe an episode with like her in it, teaming up with our characters. That didn't happen. But here in this article, I think it's going to sort of give a little uh, backdoor information into what was going on uh, with Crisis and Stargirl and everything. So it says the, Fl the Flash could have featured a DC Stargirl crossover this season. Uh, by the way, this article from Screen Rant will be in the info box below. So if you want to go over and read the whole thing yourself, you can. Uh, Stargirl's title star, Brett Bassinger, revealed her character could have appeared on The Flash this season, but a crossover episode didn't end up happening. The entire landscape of the Arrowverse shifted with the recent Crisis on Infinite Earths event. The closing montage revealed much about other DC characters and where they fit in in the universe. One of the big reveals was that the upcoming Stargirl series exists on a newly restored Earth 2 in the multiverse. And that's kind of interesting because if you think about what we saw with Stargirl on Legends of Tomorrow and the concept of them existing, you know, years and years and years ago, that would kind of fit in with the more classic style on uh, Earth 2 and what we knew of Earth 2 to begin with. And so it's kind of interesting to me that the show feels kind of modern, at least from what I've seen, instead of like old school, but the old school JSA was on that Earth and the new multiverse that's been created. So it's kind of interesting to me. Stargirl, recent, uh, Stargirl recently revealed the cast members who make up the Just Society of America and Injust Society. Both will feature heavily on the story of Courtney Whitmore, a high school student who becomes a Stargirl. She's impacted by her stepfather, Pat Dugan's old gang. He used to be the sidekick of Starman, who was sadly killed in the line of duty. The series is set to include many classic DC characters such as Our Man, Dr. Midnight, and Wildcat. Uh, Stargirl has already appeared in both Smallville and Legends of Tomorrow, though she was played by different actresses both times. Bassinger made her debut as the character briefly in Crisis on Infinite Earths. However, before having her own solo showcase, she was also in talks to appear on this season of The Flash as part of a bigger storyline that didn't move forward. That's really interesting. I don't really think there was anything this season that would have pointed towards Stargirl, especially when we knew Crisis was coming. So with all that going on, I don't see how they had expected to fit that in. She goes on to say, there have been talks of Stargirl getting to go on an episode of The Flash and having a bigger storyline, but it didn't happen this season, she said with the interview with IGN. But I think that would just be the coolest thing. So much of my family has watched Flash for years. So there you have it. They were supposed to do like a storyline, I guess, introducing Stargirl and maybe a one or two episode story arc that just completely got erased. It just got taken out of the season altogether. Considering the situation right now, I mean, it wouldn't happen anyway. I mean, they've already filmed almost to the end of the season and now they're on break until they can film again. I don't know if there would even be time to sort of pull together a crossover event towards the end of the season. This would have had to have happened before the crossover. That's the only way it could have happened. And we know that the beginning of the season was heavily influenced with leading up to Crisis and dealing with, um, you know, all of that other stuff going on with our care. It was just, I can't imagine with all the setup for Crisis and everything that was happening with like Cisco and, and uh, you know, uh, Caitlin and all that. I just don't see how this would have fit in. So that's probably what happened. Had it been any other season, a non-Crisis season, it probably would have worked. But I can see why uh, it wouldn't have worked here uh, this season of The Flash. So I'm, again, I'm very excited for the series. I'm looking forward to something a little bit more in line with a cross between like Supergirl and The Flash in terms of tone. Not quite as funny as Legends of Tomorrow and definitely not like uh, Batwoman or Arrow or anything dark like that. I don't think it's going to go that route. I think it's going to be a good balanced tone of a show. And so I'm very hyped to see what it's going to be about. Uh, but yeah, it looks fun to me special effects are I'm keeping my eye on that that is the one thing that I'm worried about is special effects I want to see if they're going to keep like these you know movie level or at least like uh you know subscription level special effects on some of these items uh or if it's going to affect them being on the CW as a regular show if that's going to somehow change the quality of the series I'm I'm really interested in that uh but look guys I want to know what you think are you excited for Stargirl do you think it's going to be a good series are you a fan of this character from the comics I'll be the first to admit out of every character that's been on the Arrowverse she's one that I know the least about and it's not because I just um you know, that I didn't have interest in her. It was just there was no stories that included her that I found her to be compelling enough to really dive deeper into like her history. So I think she's a fine character, uh, but this is going to shine a light on her and sort of make her, I guess, the DC Captain America, I guess. 
I feel like that's what they're going for here. I mean, it just seems that's the look. I mean, the design of it, yes, it always kind of looked Captain America-ish, but her design with the, the materials and the placement of the stars and stuff, I feel like it is kind of going for that. But look, I'm not trying to say that there's any kind of weird comparison between the two. I totally understand, but the, the design of it just, it strikes me as like that immediately. And I mean, it's probably because it's the American flag. Let's be honest here. So anyway, uh, we'll see how it goes. I just want to know your thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, also, new merch. I talked about this before. The t-shirts uh, for the 90s man, the design that's going to be out for the next two months. It's available now. If you go to my store over at Teespring, you can grab one. There are three different levels. There's a hoodie that has a logo on the front as well as the back. There is a uh, comfort t-shirt. It's the probably the most expensive of the two t-shirts, I think. And there's a cotton tee that's like 20 bucks. Anyway, I tried to make a price point that would work for everybody. So if you want to go over and check that out and help support the channel by getting some cool merch at the same time, I'd really appreciate it. And look, if you get one, hit me up on Twitter or somewhere like that, like even in the comments here. Let me know. I'll get a picture of it. I'll you up in the video and show you off showing off my merch because that's how much I love what I put out. There's also some really interesting fun stuff coming out in the store that I may not advertise right away, but look, you're going to have to keep an eye on it. That's why it's down below. If you're on a mobile device, it should be down below, but I will put the link in the info box. Also, give me a like if you enjoy this video, subscribe if you're new and become part of the Ericverse. Turn on the notification bell so you can get all updates of my videos as well as my live streams. Hit the join button and become part of Team Eric. Uh, if you want to support the channel in a different way, get custom emojis, unique badges, as well as um, behind the scenes videos and some other videos up there i feel like this pitch gets longer and longer at the end of each video there's stuff behind that that join button if you if you want to support the channel there you go that's pretty much it leave a comment and i will catch you guys in the next video it gets longer every time i should pre-record that it'll be much easier